I'm Anil Kumar sharing with you an application of exponential decay. The question here is, in a study of a new pain medication, it was found that 60% of a 320 milligram dose is still present in the bloodstream after 30 minutes. Model the situation B. Determine the amount of medication in a patient's bloodstream after 2 hours and after 3 hours. C. If a patient takes a dose of medication at noon and is supposed to take more when the initial dose reaches a level of 10% in the bloodstream, at what time should the patient take the next dose? You can always pause the video, answer the question and then look into my suggestions. Now, what we are given here is that 60% of 320 milligram dose is still present in bloodstream after 30 minutes, that is half an hour, right? So, initial amount is 320. So, we can say amount of medicine at any time t is equal to initial amount of 320 and decay rate is 60%, so 0 0.60. So at any time, it is after 30 minutes, we find that still 60% dose is left after 30 minutes. 30 minutes converted to hours is half an hour, right? So we could write this as 2 over half or 0 0.5 correct so that gives you the model for this for this situation correct then we need to calculate how much medicine is left after two hours so we can find what a after two hours is it will be 320 milligrams times 0 0.60 to the power of well this you could write as 2t right anyway so we'll write instead of 2 i'll write 2 divided by 0 0.5 so let's calculate this we have 320 times within bracket 0 0.6 exponent and within this exponent we have to write in brackets 2 divided by 0.5 equals to so in decimals it is 41.47 or 41.5 milligrams correct now let's calculate after 3 hours after 3 hours it will be 320 0 0.60 see point divided by 0 0.5 is as good as multiplying by 2 right so I could write this as 3 times 2 that is 6 right so let's calculate this 320 within bracket 0 0.6 to the power of 6 is equal to 14.9 So after two hours, it is 41.5 milligrams. And after three hours, it is, let's say, well, around 15 milligrams. C, if the patient takes a dose of medication at noon and is supposed to take more when the initial dose reaches a level of 10 percent so 10 percent of 320 correct so let's do that part so 10 percent of 320 is equal to 320 times 0 0.1 which is 32 milligrams so we know that final amount is 32 so we'll write 32 for a amount left starting with 320 milligrams 
0 0.60. Now we want to find T, right? So I could have written this as 320 0 0.6 to the power of 2T. That half is like 2T, right? So, so here we could write this as to the power of 2T. The idea is to find T. So if I divide by 320, I here get uh, 0 0.1, which is 10%, of course. So we get 0 0.1 equals to 0 0.6 to the power of 2t. Now we can take log both sides. So we get log of 0 0.1 equals to 2t log of 0 0.6. Isolating t, we get log of 0 0.1 divided by log of 0 0.6 is equals to twice time. Right? So this implies that time t is equal to half of this, right? So half of log of 0 0.1 divided by log of 0 0.6, right? So let's calculate. So we'll do log 0.1 divided by log 0.6 and then we'll divide this by 2. So we get 2.25. So that gives you 2, that gives, let me write here, t equals to 2.25 hours, right? So quarter of an hour is actually 15 minutes, right? So it is, it is equal to 2 hours 15 minutes. 2 hours 15 minutes. So now, at what time should the patient take the next dose? So the answer should be next dose should be taken at after 2 hours 15 minutes, that means 14, 15, right? Or, or you said 2, 15 p.m. Okay, after 2 hours and 15 minutes. So I hope the steps are absolutely clear. So we started with the standard formula, which is the, the amount and at any time is equal to initial amount times the the factor so we can say the growth rate or the decay rate in this case which is 0 0.6 over t divided by the hours which it takes to 60 percent right so we use that formula simplified a bit you could write this as 2t 0 0.5 divided by and then by substituting the values as shown here we could easily do the calculations Part C was slightly tricky since we need to find what is 10% of the amount and then use logarithms to find the time t. So this is a very critical step. So I hope you understand and appreciate it. Uh, you should look into applications of logarithms to get to this step if it is not very clear. Feel free to write your comments and share your views. If you really like and subscribe to my videos, that would be great. Thanks for watching and... All the best.